Yay, we are in for a treat today, aren't we? They're going to have fun worshiping the Lord, right? Woo! I tell you what, I always have a good time worshiping the Lord. Hi, I'm DJ. I'm going to give you your announcements, and boy, is that loud. I tell you what, well, we're going to wake everybody up. If you haven't had enough coffee, I'll wake you up. Woo! There we go. Um, we're recording, of course. You can watch this on YouTube. You can watch this on YouTube at The Sanctuary FM and uh, see this one and uh, uh, this sermon and past sermons and it'll just be fun. We're also on Facebook, the sanctuary there. Um, it is cold and flu season. We are starting to experience some of that. If you're not feeling well, please stay home. We're on YouTube, we're <laughs> on, on Facebook. So, um, but uh, we don't want to, uh, to sneeze on people and, and cause illnesses around. So we're glad that Anne is feeling much better. So yay, that's good. So hooray, hooray. Um, let's see what's going on tonight, 6 p.m., prayer at the altar. Uh, come on in. If you can, can you spend an hour with God? You know what? That's what we're going to do. So come on in tonight. We'll have prayer at the altar. This Saturday, the Ladies Connect, uh, we're in the Deborah Anointing, uh, Chapter 3, so uh, read up and do that. It's also December, so we'll have our ornament exchange, so up to $5 on an ornament. Come in, uh, wrap it up, and then we will do our little an ornament exchange and have fun d doing that, and so hooray, hooray. A brunchy kind of a food or finger food type of thing to, to munch on that Saturday at 10 o'clock over here in the hospitality room. Man, you're not meeting at all in, in December because you have other things to do, apparently. So you guys get to sleep in on Saturday until January. So there you go. Um, let's see. We have, uh, speaking of prayer at the altars, we have prayer at the altars during worship. If you have a need that you want to share with, with and have prayer with one of our elders, please come forward at that time. Uh, when the songs start to quiet down, you'll see them coming forward. And so just come on up at that time. Christmas Eve, we have a 5 p.m. service. That is on Saturday. And Christmas Day is on Sunday. So we will have church on Sunday at 10 o'clock. It'll be shorter, but it'll still be, uh, it'll be s s church. Yay. Yay. You know what? I grew up going to church on, on Christmas Day. And so, you know, I don't think that's a problem. I think that's fun. So get up, do your stuff, come to church, go home. Um, rising up, uh, our um, 
ministry in town, uh, they are looking for adult coats. If you have um, extra adult coats just hanging and collecting dust in your closet, um, go ahead and bring those in. You can bring them straight to uh, to Rising Up over there. Um, just uh, they're on State, just south of um, Platt, right over there. With um, used to be the old Radio Shack. So <laughs> anyway, uh, but you could take them there. You could bring them here and put them in the bin. There's a blue bin in the lobby. Uh, we're also collecting non-perishables for them. So um, go ahead and bring those in. They could use coats, adult coats, hats, and gloves. Um, so there you are. Uh, we'll have our ushers prepare, come forward, and we will go to the Lord uh, with, we'll give to the Lord our tithes and our offerings. So come on forward, guys. Don't just stand in the back. Come forward. I make them come forward now because otherwise they just hang out in the back. So there we go. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us. You, we thank you that we have the freedom to come and honor you um, with our tithes, with our offerings, with our worship, with our presence. We give to you because you have given so graciously to us. We ask that you take our tithes and our offerings, that you would multiply them for your kingdom. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with us this morning, please. <coughs> to me, the only one whose favor I seek, the only name that matters to me. Oh, Jesus, yours will be the friendship and affection I need to feel my Father smiling on me, the only name that matters to me. Oh. 
babe When I wake up in the land of glory With the saints I will tell my story There will be one name that I proclaim matters to me the only one whose favor I see the only name that matters to me yours will be the friendship and affection I need to feel my father smiling on me the only one that matters to me saved me. Mercy and grace is about and forgave me. Your love is all I ever needed. When I wake up in the land of glory, with the saints I will tell my story. There will be one day that I proclaim.
King of kings, the Lord of lords, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore. Here within the manger lies the one who made the starry skies, this baby born for sacrifice, Christ the Messiah.
to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship.
In that chorus one more time, Chris, you're worthy of it all. Let's just lift your hands, if you will, this morning. Church, worship him this morning. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. just a moment this morning, if you will, if you'll just close your eyes for just a moment, in a moment alone with the Father, as we reflect all that he's done, all that he's doing, every step of the way, God has been with us. He has encouraged us, he has provided for us. He has guided us and directed us. And for that, we are thankful. Just give a, take a moment this morning just to thank the Lord in your heart, if you will, and just to honor him this morning. How thankful you are. How he's poured out his blessings in your life, your family. Everything that you've been going through. All the trials and all the victories. All the trials and all the victories. We're so thankful for that. Yes, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, for guiding our steps, Lord, and directing us every step of the way. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Let's give one, one more clap offering, if you will, this morning. God bless you. You may be seated this morning for a moment before we do anything else. Let's appreciate our worship team as they have led us into the presence of God this morning. While we're transitioning out this part of the service, we want to say a special thank you to all the guys um, and uh, lady <laughs> that uh, uh, showed up yesterday to help us with the attack that we had on this property uh, with the tumbleweeds and uh, they got them out of here. So let's give them a round of appreciation, if you will. Thank you so much for helping us with that and being here at the last minute. God bless you. morning. Praise God. Um, as we shared last, the last couple of weeks, we're celebrating the season of Advent. And so the Advent wreath, we light a candle every Sunday up until Christmas, and it's just one more way to help us focus. Because the Christmas season gets a little crazy. And so we need to stop and remember the reason for the season. So this is just to help us kind of Tune in for a second. So the second Sunday of Advent is about faith, and we are going to light the Bethlehem candle. Hebrews 11 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is where hope's rubber meets the road. Faith is where hope's rubber meets the road. Last week we learned that hope has to be anchored in truth. Hebrews 11 goes on to say, By faith we understand that the universe was formed by God's command. By faith, Abel's story still speaks, though he is dead. By faith, Enoch did not, under, did not experience death because God took him. He was commended as one who pleased God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God, because the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, in holy fear of God, built an ark to save his family, taking God at his word and acting on it because the standard that sentenced the world and made Noah righteous. By faith, Abraham heard God's call and obeyed, Leaving his own country to live in a foreign land, he knew he would inherit. By faith, Abraham and Sarah bore a son that God had promised them, though they were past the childbearing years. These people were all looking forward and anchoring to the word of God had spoken to them, with no thought of turning back to their old life or the comfortable predictability of their past. Therefore, God was not ashamed to be called their God. Yes. By faith, oh, excuse me, today we light the candle of faith, the Bethlehem candle. Yes. Joseph and Mary were people of faith. They anchored their hope to the truth of what God had spoken through the angels, that the angel that the child within her was from God, that his name would be Jesus, because he would bring salvation to Israel, that they were players in a much bigger scene than they could comprehend. Bethlehem was probably not their dream vacation. They had to go up to appear in person for the census, but God was producing the drama that would fulfill the prophecy in Micah 5, chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, 
afraid that though you are a small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, of old, from ancient times. Like Bethlehem, your world may feel small, but God is able to create in your sphere redemption that will speak to generations. Like Joseph and Mary, let your faith say, God, I don't know what you're doing, but my heart has heard your call. Somehow, that is more real to me than the circumstances in front of me. I will trust you with all that I am, and I will follow. God. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Um, I need to ask today before we uh, take a moment to greet here, who is planning on staying today after service to help with the decorating? We need to get a show of hands because we're going to order lunch. Steve, I'll let you do a count here real quick. Put your hand up real high. If you're going to help, if you want to get fed, put your hand up. Okay, okay, there's a couple over here, Steve, okay. Thank you so much in, in, in advance, um, uh, and th we'll be right after the service on that. Last week, uh, some of them weren't here, we announced last week some of our newest members, and they're here today, um, and then so during the greeting time, you can also um, just greet them and congratulate them. Uh, Linda Palmer, um, uh, Nadine, uh, Jeremy and Amanda, uh, I'm just going to say the names again, Jeanette, and uh, Colleen Atwood, Lewis, I'm sorry, Luis and, and uh, Tyrone and Natasha. Let's give them a, a, a welcome this morning. I write myself these notes and then I can never read my handwriting later. So, um, but congratulations for that. I'm going to t uh, take advantage of this moment here because I, I savor the opportunities to embarrass my family. So I normally don't, I don't normally do that on a, on a public level, um, but today I'm going to. My son's birthday was uh, Thursday. When was it? Thursday, I'm just playing. And he just turned 20. So I, Chris, if you'll, let's sing, sing happy birthday to him. And I know there's a few others. If we missed you, it was just, uh, it's, we're going to do that as well. But let's, Let's, uh, let's all stand this morning because we're going to take a moment to greet and let's sing happy birthday. <laughs> and anybody else that we may have forgot, happy birthday. Take a few... Chris, this is Wednesday. Happy birthday. <laughs> she threw her right under the bus. <laughs> I'm Rachel. Rachel, yeah. Um, so take a moment to greet somebody, please. Shake at least today 20 hands because it's uh, the holiday uh, season and we want to be in a good mood. So um, go and shake some hands. Make the visitors feel welcome. God bless you. Uh, we're so so thankful for all that God is doing. How many are so thankful for what God is doing in your life? Amen. Well, I wanted to share something with you real quick. As you're getting seated and situated, again, our kids are dismissed for um, Children's Church. We're so thankful for our teachers and nursery workers. Praise God for them. Amen. So an elderly lady was well known for her faith. She was well known for her boldness in talking about it. Each morning, she would go out on her front porch and greet the new day by shouting, Praise the Lord! Thank you, Lord, for another beautiful day. 
Next door lived a man who didn't believe in God and got so angry at her daily praises and her daily prayers that he began shouting back, there is no God, there is no Lord. But his angry shouts didn't intimidate her and she kept on greeting each day with her praises and her prayers. And each morning he continued responding to her. Then hard times came upon this elderly lady and she prayed for God to send her some help. She stood on her porch and she prayed, praise the Lord, you have been so good to me, but right now, God, I'm having a hard time. Please, Lord, send me some food. The next morning, the lady went out on her porch and saw a very large bag of groceries sitting there and she shouted, praise the Lord. Her neighbor jumped out from behind a bush and shouted, I told you there was no God. I bought those groceries. God didn't. The lady started clapping her hands and said, Praise the Lord. God not only sent me groceries, but he made the devil pay for them. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for being patient on the punchline, because that took a while. This time of the year is a, is a great reminder of what the Lord has done for us this past year. Let me see by a show of hands this morning that you know for, for a fact that God has moved on your behalf in a, one situation or another. Some things that maybe you don't even know of, that nobody else knows about. I just want to see a show of hands. Is that you this morning? And how many of us could say, praise God? Praise God. It's a reminder for the church, the family, and the friends of what God is doing. We'll continue to do. I'm hopeful in the, in the, the new year to come that uh, you and I are going to see those promises and those prayers answered in a way that you'll know without a doubt that God has answered them on your behalf. And I know that we're living testimonies today of where God has moved on our behalf in one way or another. And it's in those moments where we uh, may not have those things made public about a need that we have, but we know deep down in our heart that God has moved. And sometimes we need those reminders and, when, and if we're having a hard time today, some form or fashion, and holidays maybe, I want you to know that God is hearing your heart today. He knows our struggles, and he knows uh, our heartaches, but I also know that he's the one that will bring us hope and, com hope and comfort to our broken hearts at times. How many would say amen to that this morning? So we stay in the theme of Advent today and touch on, uh, on this for a moment on the topic of faith. So if you'll stand with me now that you're good and settled and all comfortable, I want you to stand with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. We're going to go to two places today. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. I have you stand because I'm just a little old-fashioned in that, and I think it's respect for the word. How many would say amen to that? That's good because I want you to stand anyway. Hebrews 11 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Luke chapter 2 and verses 1, in those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went down, went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of David, excuse me, to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cl cl cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out of the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they te were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Amen. It will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. 
Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. That's that faith thing there. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were, were just as they had been told. I'm going to stop there. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord, for, for your word and for your presence in this place today. And for the next few moments, Lord, I, I pray that you speak to our hearts, Lord. Lord, I pray that you challenge us, Lord, and change us for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. You may be seated this, moment, mo this morning for a moment. So we're talking a little bit about the issue of the, the topic of faith and how that applies to us in this season. And many of you in this past year have stepped out in faith and, and have trusted God for those things. You know, Mary and Joseph, I'm sure, had their own, their own plans, their own agenda, their own uh, thing, thing in their hearts, what they were going to do. And then God showed up. And God showed up and changed the course of their life forever and changed the course of the world forever. And it's, it all had to do with faith. They, they stepped out and they trusted him uh, to, to do what he said he was going to do. And ultimately, following through in, in, in this avenue of faith, when they stepped out in the faith and trusting God, he, he guided them and he uh, made sure that the promises were, were set and were delivered. I would share with you today that I know that there are people in here today that have had some promises from God and they've been answered and you're still waiting on a few other promises. Boy, it sure is easy to give up or to give in and, and to get discouraged, but I would encourage you today, you just keep on hanging on just a little bit longer. You just hang on because your promise is coming, your deliverance is coming, and what the things that God has said that's going to happen for you, they are going to come to pass. The enemy is going to try his hardest to try to discourage you from the course of God, but I would tell you that the enemy is nothing but a liar, a lie from the pit of hell. I want you to know that as a child of God, you are armed with everything that you need to succeed. If we can debate and we can get discouraged and we can fight over all the little petty things, which is what the enemy wants us to do. But I would have you know that you are armed. You are got, you got every weapon you need to succeed for the journey that is ahead for you. God has proven himself over and over before, and he's going to do it in this next chapter and the next chapter. And until he comes back, we're going to keep on praising God and give him all the honor and all the glory and all the praise because he's worthy of all that. He will guide us. And so this submission and surrender that we see here from Mary and Joseph changed the course of the world. A simple definition of faith is, uh, is, is, is for believers that what God said he can do, he will do it. Let me ask you, have you been a recipient of something that seemed impossible in everybody else's eyes, but in God's realm of his word, and his promises to you, they came to pass. How many are a recipient of God's promises coming through? Boy, I, if I were, I, I, I think you should put your hand up just a tad little bit higher, just so you can remind the enemy that God is in control. He's not in control. He's, God's got you uh, uh, protected and, and taking care of you. And we don't have to listen to all those opinions and listen to all the negativity and all the little things that come into our minds that you're not going to make it, you're not going to succeed, or you're never good enough. You're good enough because God has made it well, well enough for you to be good enough because of his son, Jesus Christ. He's had you in mind all the whole time. All we have to do is do our part and enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey because it's awesome to be on that journey with Jesus Christ. Faith is... Uh, an agreement. It's an actual agreement with God in his abilities to perform his word. It's not just believing on the word of God, 
but believing in the God of the Word. We read the Word. We carry our Bibles. But do we believe the one who wrote it? Do you believe in the God of the Word? There is so many things right now that are trying to distract people from kingdom work. And there are so many things out there that are going on that would try to hinder our walk with God. How many would say amen to that this morning? And we have to make a concentrated effort in saying that this is what we're going to do. And we have to put off and put out those things that distract us because we believe of, in the God of the word. I, I look out today and I, and I hear the testimonies. We're so privileged as pastors because you, and I said this a couple weeks ago, you may not hear everything that's going on, uh, requests or things that have been answered, but we hear it all the time. I just had someone come up to me now. We sent out a prayer request for uh, somebody in Flo's uh, family. That, that little baby is coming home and so is the mom. That's answered prayer. You may not always hear about those things, but we hear about those things. I want to encourage you that they're happening. It may not seem like it in the natural, but they are happening in the supernatural. God is lining things up on your behalf. Why is that? Because he's interested in you. He hasn't discarded you. It's not too late, and you're not too far gone. But God loves you for everything you are about. He wants to take care of you and set you on the right path and for you to succeed in your walk with God. I love that. We need to preach that message as much as possible. There is so much negativity going on. Can we be about the good news? When Mary and Joseph were on the way to Bethlehem, they may have not known it at that time, but boy, they were, uh, they had, uh, in, in their whole situation, there was good news coming. I'm so glad that there's good news coming still. And people need to know that there is good news and Jesus is going to be here and help us. I need to learn how to breathe when I'm doing that because I feel like I'm going to pass out. I don't know, it's not good to see stars, right? There are some here today who need to hear that he's got things worked out on your belief, on your behalf, excuse me. He's got you covered, and he will stick up for you. How many have ever been in a battle, a verbal, how many have ever been in a verbal argument before? Really? That's it? You've never been in an argument? Wow. Wow. Come to my house. <laughs> How many have ever been in a verbal argument before? And if you haven't had one, you've had it in your head, so every hand should go up. Boy, if things line up just right, I'm going to tell this person how it is. Have you ever had that conversation? And the Holy Spirit says, it comes in and says, mm-mm. Ugh. I say that to say that there are some battles that we go through that are not necessarily have to do with things that we've done, but have to do with what other people have done. And he will stick up for you. Our instinct and our, and our, our nature is to defend ourselves, and, and there's times and places for that. But sometimes when we get in the way of trying to stick up for ourselves in the situation, God's saying, are you through? <laughs> Can I take over now? And we need to let God fight our battles. God's going to fight our battles, and he's going to defend us. He's the greatest defender that we have. And we are thankful for that this morning. He will stick up for us. He will defend us, and he will protect us. When you're lonely or you're scared, he's there. When you're happy and victorious, he's there. Let's not forget to give him praise when we're victorious. And when you're angry, have you ever been angry before? Anybody ever been angry before? Anybody? I got a little story for you. The other day, we went to go load some pictures on the kiosk at Walmart. And there's just so much help there, so much help. If you work there, don't be offended. I'm sorry. And the kiosk, Chris was using her phone. It's a fairly new phone. The kiosk locked up her phone we couldn't get it on. We couldn't get it off. And the whole time, it's ringing the emergency thing, too. So I'm waiting for the cops to show up. 
we're both getting frustrated, and the person at the, I don't know. So we took it out, and we went, and we went, drove right over to Verizon, and they fixed it. Simple little fix. And I remember how frustrated it was. And I, I know, I know some people say, you're just a too, too addicted to your phone. Look, I've seen some of you. <laughs> Don't start with me about the phone. And it was fixed in an instant. And I had a little bit of an illustration there for that. If we just chill out, go to the right people and the right source, We'll get things fixed. When it comes to the spiritual nature of things, we're going around trying to fix everything and tell everybody and do this and do that. When we need to go to the source who is Jesus Christ, who is God himself, and say, you know what? I need you to fix this. This is going to be a simple fix. Can we do that? How many would commit to doing that in this new year? That the energy that we spend, keep your hand up until I, until I tell you not to. How many are going to commit to this new year? And say, you know what, the energy I spent in complaining and fr being frustrated, I'm going to spend in praising God and giving him the honor and the glory. Come on, church. Is that you this morning? Let's start the new year that way. To clarify about this whole faith thing is that it's the reverse order. Seeing, we go from seeing as believing to believing is seeing. How, what? What does that mean? That means that you get an image in your head and in your heart. Let me just pick on maybe a family member. Of family members, and you, you need to believe, you need to have it in your heart, I'm going to believe that I'm going to see them serving God, that you're stepping out in faith. I'm believing for the hard stuff. I'm asking God for the hard stuff. Come on, somebody. Uh, it's easy to pray for the easy stuff, but we need to ask God for the hard, hard stuff. I'm going to believe in my heart. I'm going to believe in my heart. I may not see it right now. I may not see the situation that's happening in my life right now, but I know that it's going to take place because I'm believing in faith. He's done it before, and he's going to do it again. He's done it before, and he's going to do it again. How many would say amen to that this morning? Seeing is believing into believing is seeing. All right, finally, some points. Number one, number one. God has built his relationship. If you want to write this down, God has built his relationship with us based on our faith towards him. God has built this, his relationship with us based on our faith towards him. And no, I'm not as organized as my wife. She had all the PowerPoints and the pictures and all the pretty little things. And I can't even read my own handwriting, but I got something here. One of these days, I'll do it. God has built his relationship with us based on our faith towards him. Listen, it's good to do good things, to do good to do works and, and prayer and, and Bible study. I, I get all that. But the basic requirement is living by faith. Living by faith. So when we pray together as a church, which what we've been doing, we started a couple months ago back out there in the pavilion. And things started changing immediately, immediately. Because the word says, where God's people dwell together in unity, there he commands the blessing. And things started to move on our behalf. And we can, I, we can go on and on about some of the things that have been taking place. Are we having a lot of people show up? No. But are we having people show up? Yes. Is it important to pray? Yes. But the faith that is activated from that time of prayer, believing God for the impossible, is what really matters. And we're wired on purpose to know that God is the God of the impossible. How many have ever faced a situation in your life where it's been completely impossible for you, but God has come through on your behalf? Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, For with God nothing is impossible. Jesus said unto him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. There are some people in here today, and maybe that are going to watch this later on today, that are believing for a physical healing, a financial miracle, a marriage to be restored, for your parents to come to the Lord, for your kids uh, to, get, to come to the Lord. I want to tell you, I want to make sure that I say this today, that I declare along with, because the word says so, I believe that there's going to be a day where we're going to start hearing even more testimonies of where God has moved on your behalf and he has seen those things. How many are praying for the impossible right now and you're trusting God? Come on, let me see a show 
of hands. You may not, nobody may even know what's going on, but God knows it. And, you, and with God, all things are possible. Amen. Number two, faith is a gift from God. John chapter 3 and verse 27. To this John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. I believe that those things are going to come, come to, to, uh, to play in our lives. I love when somebody brand new or somebody that may even be familiar with the gospel and they have struggled and they have encountered just a tiny little bit of God's presence and it has set them free. It has set them free. Do you know that the living word of God and once you declare it, and once you read it, it still sets people free. Faith is an important uh, spiritual in, in nature. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 lists faith as a manifestation of the Spirit. Galatians 5, and 23 lists faith as a fruit of the Spirit. Faith is tied to God's Word, and throughout you will see it in the basics and the bases of our foundations. Number three. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. So our passage here in Luke chapter 2, I don't read all of it, but verses 1, actually 1 through 20, um, uh, depicts and paints the portrait of a world about to change. The birth of our Savior. The greatest event in all of history. In the occurring in the humblest of circumstances. Verse 11, Jesus is called a Savior. How many are thankful for that Savior? A Savior who has come to deliver us. Our Savior, Christ the Lord, has also been anointed as the Messiah of God. I'm so thankful for this Savior. I am thankful that he has come on my behalf. Aren't you thankful this morning that your life has been changed forever? That your life has been changed forever? How many lives have been changed forever? That Savior... Lots of, lots of promises. This journey that we live on, in, that we're living, is not promised smooth and uneventful. It can be difficult at times. But the word is full of promises that we're going to make it. It's full of promises that he's going to be there for us. As we wrap up this year and we get ready for next year, could we dream a little bit bigger? Could we dream a little bit more for the impossible? How many would say, that's yes. I, and some of you might say, I'm too old for that. No, you're not. No, you're not. I had a, a friend of mine that's a pastor, and he said, uh, he, he was talking about some of the people in his church and you know what? No one's paying me here today to brag on you guys. Now, if you feel inclined, that's fine. But I was talking to my friend, and I said, you know what? We have a great group of people. And, and they started asking me about the age. And I said, that doesn't play a role here. They just get out and work. They get out and help with water. They get out and help with tumbleweeds. They get out and help with shoeboxes. Listen, when we were at the processing center the other day, a lot of these guys that were there, uh, with all due respect, uh, several years older than I, and they didn't even take a break. I was looking for every chance to take a break. <laughs> Chick-fil-A came in. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> and they're still working. And I believe that's because people are motivated to do kingdom work. So we can't put labels of age. We need to be in a place where we say, God, I've been through some things, but I'm still willing to be used for your glory and for your honor. And I believe that there are people in here today that are doing that because 
your Savior, Jesus Christ, means something to you, that he has changed your life, and he has uh, changed your life forever. Let me see a show of hands that remember the day you got saved, the day that God sent his son and you encountered Jesus Christ. Look around the room today, of how, a, a room full of testimonies. How many have got a testimony in their heart where God has saved you and has set you free? To God be the glory. And when we go through this season this year and we get ready for next year, let's share the good news that Jesus Christ is still alive and he's still there for us and he still saves and he still sets free. Close your eyes for a moment this morning. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to pray for a moment. And we're going to prepare our hearts here for communion. But before we do anything else, I just want us to take a moment this morning, if you will, to reflect on the faithfulness of God in your life. Would you do that for a moment this morning? And just tell God in your heart how thankful you are that he has worked on your behalf. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We are so thankful, Lord, for what you've done and what you're doing. Lord, increase our faith, Lord God. Increase our faith as we step out in that measure, Lord God, in that new chapter, that new adventure, Lord God, as we reflect on what you have done this past year, Lord, as we prepare for the new year. Lord, that we will step out in faith and trust you, Lord God, for the things that may seem difficult. Lord, we, we know that there are many, I know that there are many requests, Lord, in this place today. Father, that uh, no one else has heard about, but you see, the, you see the, the tears, you see the heartache, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that this, 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 during this holiday season, Lord, and next year, Lord, that we will look back and we'll, we'll say, I remember on this day, that you changed me and you challenged me for greater things. That we step out in the faith, Lord, like never before. Bring it to pass in our lives. Without anybody looking around for just a moment this morning, and you would just say, yes, Pastor, that's me. I need some, some prayer in my faith. I need help in my faith. I need help in my faith. Would you just lift your hand if that's you this morning? I need help in my faith. I'm struggling in my faith, and that's okay. Come on, anybody else? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you. I'm going to trust you as I step forward in this new chapter, in this new journey. God's speaking to you right now. All you have to do is surrender to that. Surrender to it. Submit to it. And there it is. And God will show you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Walter, would you come? We have the privilege this morning of sharing in the communion meal together. We practice open communion here, so if you're new here, you don't know. If you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're free to come and join with us in the meal. Uh, if you'd come up the two center aisles and uh, take the elements and then uh, return your seat via the outside aisles, and not trip over each other. and. Uh, Take just a moment and uh, then come forth and, and take of the elements.
Next, we're going to piggy bank on piggyback on some of the things that have been said before us in the service this morning. Um, we're looking at Hebrews 11. I'm going to look at Hebrews 12. We began the service with the with the music and worship that talks about the days when we're going to uh, be together with the saints that have gone before us. That crowd of witnesses will join, tell our testimonies. Hebrews 12 and verses 2 and 3 says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him, or think of him, who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Think of him. He could have come down off that cross. We're told to think of him and what he endured so that we do not become weary in our faith. The author of Hebrews doesn't mention pain in those verses, though Jesus suffered mightily. Rather, he scorned the shame that the cross represented and endured. What he endured was the agony of separation from the Father, bearing the sin, the rebellion of the very people he created. Think of him. It's our joy to be associated with him in sharing this bread and juice as he did with his disciples. Paul shares in 1 Corinthians 11, I received from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Think of him on that cross, and let's share in the cup. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your plan that required sending your Son to cleanse and atone for our sins. The agony he went through in that period when you turned your head from him and he felt that absolute separation from you, taking on all the sin and rebellious hearts of mankind, his creation. Be sacrificed that could bring us back into communion with you. Help us, Father, in our remembrance to draw strength that we do not grow weary or lose heart this week. Please go with us. Remind us when we need it. See that we have a cloud of witnesses. They're also cheering us on in our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Chuck. Uh, real quick here before we go, Cheryl wanted to share something with you guys. I don't know who needs to hear this, but God's just given me this word about faith. Um, my story, 40 plus years ago, I had um, a disease attack my eyes and I've struggled with my vision over the 40 plus years, and I've had two cornea transplants, and um, this summer, my right eye is the one that, um, my left eye is the one that had the cornea transplants, and um, I had a stitch come loose, and they removed it, and I give credit to God for this, but, um, I can now see 2025 with that eye with no contact. I um, 
do wear reading glasses to see, but all of us older people know about that. But I just, the, the thing is, my faith remained steady. There were times where I could barely see, and um, God, he, he healed my eye, and I can only give credit to God for that. So he's just had me move today. Someone needs to hear that, that sometimes it takes a while, but, you know, don't lose faith. So thank you, guys. Well, stand with me, if you will, this morning. We're going to dismiss in prayer. Thank you so much for being here today. Colleen, I'm going to pick on you again. Will you come up here, please, and dismiss us in prayer? I appreciate you so much and, and Rocky and, and uh, you guys being here today. So dismiss us in prayer. Thank you so much. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we just come before you in the words that Pastor Chuck has spoken out of your word today we pray that we would take them to heart not just to hear them and walk out of here and nothing happened but that we would strive to have more faith in you we would strive to get out of the way so that you can do your work in us father we love you we thank you for this time of year and just help our hearts and our minds to focus on you instead of the world and what the worldliness of what christmas has become we love you father we give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name.